All right, 2020 was a year for some more Dryad saddles. And uh, these are pheasant backs. I like that phrase better. And uh, these look good. No bugs, just the right size. I cut off anything that was super woody. There is some woody stuff there. We'll be trimming those out. But these are so small, I'm not even going to worry about getting any of this off the bottom. This is going to be fine. Uh, when you're looking for these, you just want to make sure they smell like uh, uh, cucumber, watermelon kind of a smell. Um, but we're just going to clean these up and then uh, do them one at a time here so you can see kind of how to clean up these smaller ones. Don't need any tools, just uh, use your fingers. start out with the paring knife just to find anything if, it, if the if the knife tries to stop just like right now I can feel that the, it's pulling against the knife so a lot of that needs to go if you want them to be tender that's how I would trim that one out some people would leave a little more which is fine uh, and then it's And that's sliced up so easy, uh, the knife just goes right through it so you know they're not going to be woody at all. And here's one that I broke while picking it, same deal. I'll just uh, wash it up. And we got some ramps here that we got. Uh, we actually got these from a store here, but we found a spot. I'll link some pictures in this video. Post some pictures in this video. So you can see the wild, the wild uh, batch that we found. But uh, these are really nice. They're easy to identify as well. Um, usually it's like one leaf or two leaf. You might even get three leaves per wild leek, but they're called ramps. And it's just a wild leek. They taste like garlic, shallot, and an onion all sort of mixed together. Uh, these are very strong. If you cook these, uh, you want to make sure you definitely, uh, they cook up like spinach. Uh, just don't, if you eat them raw, make sure you got something to drink. They're a little bit strong. We'll go ahead and slice that one. Just goes right through super easy. If you feel it pull at all or give any resistance, then you want to cut a little bit more off. I already know what's not going to work out here. See, right now the knife doesn't even want to go through it. So we already know we don't want that. And this is about the right size. I mean smaller would be nice i guess these if you wanted to go with a perfect one these are this is you know, great and then just if you find bigger ones leave them so the spores will drop and come back next year uh, i found this on a um this has been growing on a box elder tree for uh, quite a few years now but it uh, looks like this is going to be one of the last years because the bottom of it is all rotted and so they're growing closer and closer to the ground each year as the tree as they use up all the uh, nutrient in the tree so this this year's batch was very down close to the ground also i'll put some pictures up of what they looked like before i picked them uh, the knife's pulling just a little bit on that right there so i'm just going to take that little bit off of there there that's much better it's just going right through if you leave that woodiness on there you won't you won't be able to eat them they're just too tough so uh, again this is what you want to find and if it looks like bird feathers you're uh, on the right track and these things get big these these get you know 20 inches across sometimes, uh, 18 inches uh, at least, uh, but you can't eat them. You can maybe take off the very outside of this right here. You would just cut off the very edge of a great big one and you could use it to flavor some soup or uh, for a stock or something, but it, they're very tough. They're hard to eat when they're that big, but I have done it. I did post a, I put up a video of a batch of these that I picked a few years back I think it was 2014 I'll put the link below um, 
of some bigger ones that I cleaned and uh, a method that I used to clean them. But this one here looks pretty good. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. We'll see what we got. The knife isn't resisting at all. Just going right through. No problem. Tough. These are a woody mushroom anyway. But uh, if you if you don't uh, pay mind to that, and yeah, there's a that's picture perfect right there. That's what you want to really. If you could find a couple of dozen of those, leave all these big ones behind and let the spores come back. There was nothing woody about that one at all. That little one just cut right up. I think I'll do them in some butter today and we'll fry them up with these ramps. Sounds good to me. All right, we'll cut up these ramps too. Might as well show you these. Take about half of them. I'll use the rest of these for some Asian food. And we'll just uh, about like that. I'll cut a couple of these lengthwise, these bigger ones. Cut a couple of them a little smaller. Uneven sized pieces is perfect. All right, now this is where the garlic part comes in. These are kind of oniony. It's a little shallot thing going on, but when you get up into these, it gets stronger and stronger garlic. I'm gonna, and we're going to be serving this with steak later. So I'm going to chop this all up and fry it with those really nice pheasant back mushrooms. That's it. And, uh, We'll put those in. We've got to fry the mushrooms for a little while. We won't put these in right away. A little peanut oil. Peanut oil will help the butter not burn. Nice and frosty. As soon as it smells nutty, we're ready to go. Crank your heat up on high. Nice hot skillet. These guys have a lot of water in them. So the hotter the skillet, the better. Just don't want to burn your butter right off the bat. Once you've got mushrooms in there, you can crank it right up. Put some salt, pink salt, to help get the water out. We're going to do some Sichuan peppercorn. You can just use black peppercorn. You can also put white pepper in this too. You don't want chunks of anything in it. See, look at the water coming out of those. There's no way not to stew these. Um, I don't even think you could get away with it in a wok. It's just a, uh, I like to do them as hot as possible. Get that water out. Here they are after about five minutes. And you can see the water's already disappearing. Just keep them on that high heat until they start sizzling again. And you can see how much less water there is now. And you can see the oil on the bottom again. So now we're actually going to start frying. And you don't want to cook these to death. They'll get tough. Uh, you, know, you can't, they can't really overcook a mushroom, but with woodier mushrooms, I think you can. <clears throat> we'll cook for a few more minutes and then we'll add our ranch. And this is about three or four minutes later. And uh, 
we got just enough oil to cook our ranch because the mushrooms are starting to really soak up that peanut oil and butter. We're going to go ahead and throw the bigger parts in first. Get them coated with oil and then we'll throw the rest in. Get all those on the bottom. There we go. We got some good sizzling going now. Our oil, all of our water is pretty much gone now. We're back down to our oil we started with. That's the tricky part of cooking these. Otherwise, not a big deal. I'm gonna throw the rest of our ramps in. This is where the garlic. This is why I didn't add garlic. Because uh, at this point. We've got going to have a lot of garlic, so we'll do a little, little more salt, just a pinch, a little bit more peppercorn, or in my case, I'm using Sichuan peppercorn. And these are going to kind of wilt down just like spinach. And you don't need to cook these to death either. As soon as these are done, I'm pulling these off. Right now as well. Just turning the heat off. Let them finish wilting here. So that nice, nice color. Let's sample one of these mushrooms. Tender. They're not tough. I mean, they've got a nice texture. Um, it's hard to put your finger on what the texture is. I guess it would be like very tender calamari. It's almost what um, the texture is with a very mild woodiness to them. Um, one of the best mushrooms that you'll ever find in the forest. That's for sure. If you ever uh, stumble upon these, Make sure you grab some and uh, leave a few behind so that the spores will spread. But uh, this is how I cook these up. Very simple, takes about maybe 15 minutes total cooking time from the time I started. And I'm, right now I'm not, the heat is off and we're just gonna finish wilting. If you don't cook those uh, leaves, they're very strong uh, in garlic. But these are just cooking up. They're just starting to get translucent, falling apart. Look at that. It just doesn't take very long at all. All right, let's serve these babies up, we say. And I'll just warm these up just a little bit when we go to serve them. Getting them cooked ahead of time, which is easy enough to do. You can just let them sit out until you're ready to serve them with your with your meal. And that is how I like to cook these mushrooms. And these uh, ramps are something new we've been cooking this year. We found a little patch of them. Like I said, we were able to uh, buy these ones that we got this year. I just got these at a little store called Martha's Vineyard. And they had these, so we uh, took advantage of that. But yeah, this is it. Um, these are very tasty, kind of a woody, calamari-ish kind of a flavor, a feel, texture, whatever you want to call it. But uh, pheasant back mushrooms, if you see them in the woods, make sure you grab some. These are awesome.